am Rich Ward from Fozzy, and here is my bullying story. Uh, I moved from Charlotte, North Carolina to uh, Swanee, Georgia in 1985, when Swanee, Georgia was uh, a real small country town. Now it's become part of Metro Atlanta, it's a suburb. But before, it was really in the beginning stages, it was just new homes trying to make its way into an old country community. Um, I lived downtown in Charlotte, I lived in a real mixed neighborhood, I went to a real mixed high school. Uh, matter of fact, in my high school in downtown Charlotte, uh, it had a big English as a second language program and it was lots of uh, Laotians, Vietnamese, Thai students, we had lots of uh, East Africans. We had, we had huge diversity of folks, so I was just kind of used to growing up with lots of different cultures. And my father's English, so I got started playing soccer when I was a kid. There was never football or basketball or baseball. So I, I, and then I moved to Swanee, and there was no soccer team because they wouldn't be caught dead playing that sissy sport. Um, and that's the truth. Like, there were two black guys in the whole high school. Uh, everybody else had pickup trucks and Camaros, which I think are cool, but only in hindsight, because at the time, I had Flock of Seagulls hairdo. Like, I was crazy, you know, I was like somewhere between glam and punk rock and new wave, and I wore girls' jeans, and yeah, I used to wear button-down shirts tied in the front, like, because I was like, I was like influenced by Missing Persons and The Clash and suicidal tendencies and like I love punk rock and I love hardcore music but I love metal so I also wore my maiden shirts and stuff but I wore eyeliner and it became very clear to me early on that this wasn't going to work in the school so what I ended up doing was pushing harder the more that people called me names the more that I wore more makeup and more I pushed back. And in hindsight, for all of you folks out there who have been bullied because you choose to be a little different, we just have to understand that if we're gonna be different, there comes some accountability and responsibility with that. And I was immature about it because I pushed. Instead of saying, you know, uh, maybe I should just wear eyeliner, I didn't have to go all the way, but I wanted to rub it in their face. And so there's something to be, there's something about being an individual and knowing who you are and wanting to be who you are and also making sure that you're not trying to bring conflict on, on it because I was the guy who brought the conflict to me. Instead of trying to be friends and trying to say, dude, I'm cool, I just, man, I love Missing Persons. Have you ever checked out the first Duran Duran record? Have you ever listened to, you know, uh, you know, Dire or Mad Man by Ozzy? Instead of telling these guys who were into Hank Williams Jr., and you know, country artists that I've never heard of in a culture, it was a huge culture class for me. And instead of me trying to be like a steward and be like the cool artsy rock and roll guitar player kid, I pushed back and I ended up getting beat up a bunch. But in hindsight, I think I brought some of that onto myself because instead of, I, I was being aggressive back. And there's something to be said for, um, knowing that everything we do in life, we, we have some accountability that has to go along with it. And so I'd like to encourage folks out there that are a little different, that are in environments that feel weird to you and you feel out of place and stuff. It's cool to be different and you don't need to sell out and try to be something else. You don't try to have to conform and fit in. But there's something to be said for being kind and being the person that says, hey man, I get it, man. I look like an idiot to you. but." You know, you look cool to me, and I don't, I don't want you to change. I'm just asking you to give me a pass and let me just be who I am. You know what I mean? We, we can sit next to each other in chemistry and get along just fine because that's what makes it cool. If, uh, if there wasn't, you know, and it's sometimes cool to be self-deprecating, too. If, like, if it wasn't for idiots that look like me, you wouldn't look cool as a jock, right? And you could say things like that to yourself and make people think, hey, this guy's cool. You know what I mean? He doesn't look down at me because I'm a football player because there's a tendency for us to get into clicks and clicks are the worst things that can happen. It's always, when I grew up in Charlotte in that mixed high school, kids who liked reggae and who liked the Grateful Dead and the kids who liked heavy metal all hung out together. We were all friends because 
we learn to find common ground. You know, we threw frisbee together, we kicked soccer balls and stuff, and, and if you find yourself on the outside, find a way to reach a hand in to figure out how you can relate. Because we live in a society today where you've got conservatives and liberals who they only really argue about 20% of stuff in the middle. They could probably get together on 80% of stuff they agree on. Instead, as a society, we decide we want to focus on the 20% that we can't agree on. And so we stand on opposite sides of the roads and throw rocks at each other and call each other names. You're a hate monger, you're a racist, you're this and you're this. And I just want to say that life ends up a much better place when you can find the 20% that you can agree on and find those places where you can come together and, uh, and get along. And so that's what I like to encourage all you freaks like me to just find a place where you without compromising who you are and feeling like you're selling out, just find a place where you can accept people for where they are and you make the first, you make the first move. Because sometimes people are jerks and they're not always going to make the first move. If you make the first move to try to find common ground and if they don't reach back across, then fine. But at least you made the effort and you have the dignity and pride to say, hey, listen, I made, I made the move and they didn't want to reciprocate, so it's cool. So I'll hang out under the tree, out in the quad and listen to my whatever music, and listen to my Kill Switch Engage or my new Fozzy record and I'll be a heavy metal dude and, and it's cool. And just remember that 10 years from now, none of this will mean anything. None, you'll never even, it'll all just be a funny life experience that you'll laugh about with your wife or your husband and you'll, you'll joke about the time that when the big bully in high school called me the F fag word 10 million times and tortured me the time that I ran over and took a jump rope and swatted him and then ran all the way to the principal's office so that he wouldn't beat me up. Like, I turned myself into the law. Like, these are funny. Like, at the time, it was terrible, like, traumatic. Like, but it, now it's funny. You know, you talk about you things you think are serious stuff now in 10 years. They're just life experiences, man. And it's just stuff. It's it's character building. It's, it's the building blocks that make who we are and all these experiences. So, you know, even though you think it's tough, man, it, you know, it can be worse. And it may get worse. And that's what makes us humans, is just growing with it and bouncing. It's not who we are in the good times that defines us. It's how we react in the bad times that define our character.